Hello, calculus fans. Okay, so let's take this function, f of x equals square root of x plus 2. We're going to find a formula for f prime, and then when we're done with that, let's answer the question of what is the domain of f prime of x. Anytime we see one of these problems that involves finding the derivative, we're going to use the definition of the derivative function. So here we write it out as a limit, and then we go ahead and plug in the function in question. So we're plugging in an x plus h into this thing, and so that's why in the numerator you see a square root of x plus h plus 2. Now we have a method for dealing with these kinds of limits, and we've talked about it. We're going to rationalize the numerator. So we just multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate radical expression, and this is exactly the thing that we're going to need to uh, rationalize the numerator. So we remember that that makes the numerator into a difference of squares, and so that gets rid of the square root, and so we get this expression. Now again, if you're not sure about how this works, you might have to take this numerator here and write this out on pencil and paper and multiply it all out. You want to think about using a minus b times a plus b. So having done that now, we can just cancel out a bunch of things in the numerator. You'll notice that everything in the top cancels out except for the h. Now this is good because this is the h that we need to cancel out uh, for the top and the bottom. So these are going to be gone. Okay, so now once the h's are gone, so we have an expression that we can deal with, now it's going to be okay to plug in h equals zero. Now this is not exactly a root function or, or anything like that, but if we apply all of our various limit laws, then it's okay to plug in h equals zero. So we're going to go ahead and just do that. So once we plug in h equals 0, then we get an expression that looks like this, which we can simplify. It's not too bad. And we get this as our final answer. So this is what the derivative is. Let's take a look at a picture of this thing, along with considering the domain. So as far as talking about the domain, that the derivative is going to exist as long as x is bigger than negative 2. Notice that we can't plug in negative 2 into the derivative because then we end up with a 0 in the denominator. But anything bigger than negative 2, then we get a positive number inside that square root and then we'll be, we'll be okay. So that means the domain of f prime is this interval from negative 2 to infinity. And I'd like to take a look at the picture of the original function and the derivative. Okay, so I've sketched some graphs here. We've got a graph of the original function and a graph of the derivative. Uh, notice that there's an asymptote associated with the derivative, that it's undefined at negative 2, but if you get close to that, then it's going off to infinity. And let's think about qualitatively in terms of the picture of the original function and how we get the derivative and how these match up. First thing to notice is that f prime of x is always positive, and that's because the tangent lines to the original function all have positive slopes. If I were to draw a tangent line, it, it always has a positive slope no matter where you draw it. Also, we should notice that the bigger the value that of x, the slopes are getting smaller. And so that explains why uh, the f prime of x, this function here, is getting smaller as we move out towards uh, infinity. Also notice that if, if we were to draw a tangent line, say very close to negative 2, we'd have a very steep slope, something like this, and that's why the values of the derivative are getting very large over here. We'll be talking a lot more about this concept, about how we can relate the graph of the original function and the graph of the derivative. Okay, that's all for now.